uh, Landon or Brandon? Landon, I let with uh, the Brandon. Landon and Brandon. Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> Brandon, I'm sorry. Brandon. Oh, he's Brandon. he's playing the twin. I don't know. He's oh my gosh, you. so he's sorry. The, he's doing the twin prank <laughs> with your weather forecast. Good morning. Good morning, and yes, yesterday for Halloween I was Brandon for for the day, and nobody <laughs> had a clue. <laughs> Have you guys ever done Halloween as conjoined twins? I think that would actually be oh pretty cool. Gosh. Oh, wow. maybe next year. That, thank you. Thank you. I we, actually, I never even thought of doing that, but I think next year we might try to pull that off. So we'll see what happens. All right. You can send your invoice <laughs> to the link and, you know, like we'll, we'll happily accept that. Actually, if you ever seen the movie Malignant and it had the conjoined twin on the, on her back, oh, yeah. the main character, maybe I can do that with Brandon. I'll put him on my back and he'll be like the, the monster. <laughs> Yikes. Well, you know. Check that movie out. S speak speaking of Halloween and trick or treating and everything like that, trick or treating weather was kind of interesting last night because it, it rained obviously for so much of Saturday afternoon and then Sunday was kind of funky. But right around the time that you would expect the little ghouls and goblins to be walking around looking for candy and everything, it was actually pretty chill last night. It cleared up pretty nice. It was awful humid though. I was out there in Tumon last night with my brother and my nephew and some friends. Um, but it was a good night. A lot of weather, showers and thunderstorms in the morning across the island, but it cleared right on out by midday and then it was a beautiful afternoon. Otherwise, um, I was out bush cutting on Saturday and of course it was my quarterly bush cut. So the sword grass is probably upwards of 12 to 13 feet. Um, apologies wow. to the dead old mayor from my yard. She's been too busy. <laughs> That's some samurai <laughs> so level sakati right there, man. <laughs> you know, it's not a yard, it's a jungle. And so <laughs> I'll finish it up in January probably, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah. Weather outside is a little bit frightful. Uh, tis the season. We have, I think, 54 days. <laughs> I guess we can say that now. It's close Christmas. enough. Yes, it is. And so this is what you're waking up to if you're watching from Pompeii. They've had showers and thunderstorms barreling through the, the island this morning. I've been talking to the embassy staff this morning just to let them know what's going on over there. But a lot of weather out there, and that's bouncing around. But it's just a small mes a convective cluster, nothing organized. So that's the good news. But locally... Uh, we've had that surface trough, this trough pushed through over the region um, Saturday night, Sunday morning. That's moving off to our west, and we have some residual stuff behind it. So just more mid and upper level cloudiness. But we're starting to see some little bursts of convection across the area. So that's going to be the theme for today. Switching over to the radar, this is where we're looking out on the Doppler weather radar at the moment. The showers, this is where the showers are falling, uh, coming in generally from the south and the southeast, moving pretty light. One of the things to look out for today is if the winds do uh, decrease further, we could have enough um, daytime heating to spark some island convection. There might be a weak signal in support of that with the light winds across the region. So be on the lookout for that for any island effect thunderstorms later midday this afternoon uh, with those convective cells developing across northern and western parts of the island. So go ahead and queue up the slides, Jason. We'll gotcha. start talking about the main threat. Um, and if you're out of the waters yesterday, Tumon or anywhere north and west facing, you'll probably notice the waves were pounding over there. We had a, um, a large sea and surf event, and that was a result of the distant former typhoon Malu that was well in the North Pacific. That large wind filled with that typhoon generated those swell that eventually made their way over to the islands. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, during the hazardous surf along north and west facing reefs. So it was pounding pretty good. A lot of surfers out there had gotten the boat base, and it was a beautiful swell coming in out there. If you know what you're doing, um, have fun, but otherwise stay out of the water because those currents will pull you right out over the reef if you're not careful. And I think there are at least two rescues performed. I don't think there are any casualties, thankfully, but there were two people rescued. Uh, Retidian Beach was shut down yesterday because of the hazardous surf and strong currents. Micronesia, we did issue our first drought information statement for the year or for this cycle uh, for Kapinga Marengi Atoll in the far southern part of Pompeii State. This is going to be probably the first of a number of uh, biweekly statements coming from us for the drought conditions across parts of Micronesia. Elsewhere across Micronesia, very wet. So again, the next slide showing the surf advisory for north and west facing reefs that's anywhere from upper harbor north facing commercial uh, glass beach 
all the way up through PD, Aston, Adeloupe, and then on up and around Tumon, Oka Point, Oka Cliff, Tangisan Beach, and then on up around Virginia. So any of those beaches, north and west facing, uh, do, do be careful because this currents are strong, the waves are high, but they will be decreasing rapidly through today and tonight and then to two, uh, Tuesday as a swell subsides from that distant storm. And again, when in doubt, don't go out. Um, avoid those rip currents at all costs if you're not a good swimmer, if you're just going for fun. Uh, stick to beaches with a lifeguard on duty so that you can be safe and more protected from anything that may happen. Otherwise, swim with a buddy. But when you're in doubt, don't go out because those rip currents will take you by surprise and you have to know how to survive those. Uh, the next slide, very wet October. And we discussed this a week ago last Monday about the excessive rainfall we had. October was the wettest October on record, I believe, for our office. We had, for the month, 26.68 inches of rain. Normal for the month is just under 13 inches. So it was a very wet month. And none of that came from tropical storms or typhoons. It was just from surface troughs, uh, convergence, island convection, and weak disturbances passing through the area. And it dumped uh, over two feet of rain for the island. Yesterday, we had one and a quarter inches of rain across much of Guam uh, just to finish off the month. For the year, we are above average for rainfall. And recall a couple months ago, we were about two feet below normal. And now we're above normal for the year. So we yeah, I was going to say that yesterday, that was just kind of like cherry on top of a very, very wet October. Right? That's exactly it. Just to finish this off. And so <laughs> I think we had over, I think we had 10 days of an inch or more rainfall for the day here at the airfield. So that was a pretty wet month. We'll see what November plays out for us. Uh, we are in a La Nina advisory. So that means uh, possibly improved conditions for our tropical outlook, uh, meaning any remaining activity will be uh, kind of a decreased chance for tropical cyclones across the Mariana Islands uh, with a shift more toward the west and north. So that is good news for us, but does not mean in any way that we are out of the woods at this time. Some of the longer trends in the models showing about uh, 10 days out, more of a established trade wind pattern across the region from Micronesia all the way across the Mariana Islands. So we could be seeing a gradual uh, trend as the uh, seasons start to battle it out between dry season and wet season. And so, again, we are in that transition period coming up uh, by the end of November into December, where we start to go from the wet season, the tropical wet season to the drier season. So change is afoot, but we are not out of the woods yet for tropical cyclones. Uh, the drought statement on this slide uh, showing that severe drought conditions developing across Kapinga Marengi, where they are just south of the axis of showers and thunderstorms that have been very prominent across much of Micronesia. Elsewhere across Micronesia, rainfall totals are very abundant, starting to get some drier conditions in Palau. Uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Center, no suspect areas. And looking at the long range models, I don't see much um, chance for any tropical cyclone development for the Mariana Islands are upstream of us, at least for the next one to two weeks. So that is the good news as far as the tropics are concerned. Looking at the satellite picture, we do have that surface trough right over Palau near Yap and just west of us. That's what brought the weekend weather. Uh, that is moving off toward the west with uh, more of a trade wind uh, ITCC type setup across eastern Micronesia near Pompeii with that convective cluster there this morning. And then more showers and thunderstorms near Madro and Kwajalein. And then out on the seas, uh, the combined seas are right now about five to seven feet. A lot of that from the north, that will be subsiding gradually as the large swell from the distant typhoon does diminish in the coming uh, day or two. Wind waves, very light out over the open waters. So we're going to start transitioning more towards a east swell in the coming days and weeks. And so for your rest of the week, mostly clouded with isolated showers and thunderstorms, we do have abundant moisture in the atmosphere. So we're not going to be shaken off into bone dry conditions this week, but we're going to keep the isolated showers and thunderstorm potential in through the week with another surface trough coming in probably around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what could bring an uptick in showers and thunderstorms for the last half of the week, but the weekend looks better. Okay. So, so for those of um, those students who are watching right now, you know, like uh, getting ready to play high school football, should they, maybe be expecting like, you know, kind of like Friday night lights, nice, you know, dry gridiron conditions, or is it going to be like one of those, you know, I'm going to 
if I'm a running back, I'm going to take the ball and then I'll get hit at the 25 and I'll hide your plane all the way to the 30. Yeah, you want to have the cleats just in case. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there, there's going to be a little bit of a saturation of the soils, but spotty showers probably by Friday night, but not a, a washout. It's a good tip. Good, good time to watch football too. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great week. All right. We'll see you next week. On Saturday, dozens of people participated in the Guam Freedom Coalition's March Against Mandates. Here's more from that protest. So I'm here personally because I think it's important where there's risk, there must be choice. 